Bennett and I decided to focus, uh, do like a three part series on the spine. Uh, we feel like we were kind of like, we focus so much on our hips, we focus so much on our shoulders, um, but we never really think about what's going on in the spine. Hey, Emma. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, we decided to do a three-part series. So today we're going to be kind of focusing on our cervical spine, but we're also going to go over just the spine in general. And the main intention is when we practice, a lot of times like we're in a posture and we're thinking, oh my gosh, my hips are burning or oh my God, my shoulder is so tight. Um, but we don't really think about where our spine is in time and space. It's my cat <laughs> having fun. Okay. So I want to share my screen. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, everyone can see. Yes, awesome. So the first thing I wanted to talk about the spine is the movements of the spine, because that's essentially what we're doing. There are four main movements of the spine. Um, flexion, extension, lateral flexion, and rotation. So I'm going to show them right now, and if you want to do them along with me, that'll make this all the more fun. So flexion is when the spine goes forward, and it rounds down almost, but flexion means forward. Extension would be going backwards or going back, extending the spine, including the head. Lateral flexion is when you kind of do a side bend, opening up one side, bringing the shoulder and the hip closer together on the other. Rotation is a twist, and then anatomical position is uh, kind of your neutral standing spine. It's not necessarily a movement, but it's a, a state of the spine that we're in quite a bit. Uh, the next thing I wanted to bring up is the amount of vertebrae we have in each of these. Seven for cervical, 12 for thoracic, five for lumbar. Easy way to remember is through beverages, uh, coffee at seven, tea at 12, and liquor at five, even I feel like today mine's was like coffee, coffee, and much more coffee. Um, but that's an easy way to remember. So the cervical spine, which we're going to focus on today, has seven. Just reiterating that. The poses we're going to do today that we want to really stress, um, these positions of the spine, just so we could feel how our body is when we're in that movement. For flexion, we have Paschimottanasana, the forward fold. Extension, we have supported fish. Lateral flexion, child's pose with a side stretch. Stretch, So that's like hands at 11 or hands at two. And rotation, we're doing deer with a twist. And then for the anatomical kind of neutral position, we have Shavasana. Um, so the cervical spine, this image has our beautiful seven vertebrae, starting from the bottom of the head and going um, to basically the top of the shoulders. And so, oops, there's the spine. I'm gonna stop this share, and I'm gonna actually suggest, if anyone wants to join with me, um, we're gonna palpate the cervical spine, so we're gonna feel for it. So we wanna start by looking for C1. So you're gonna go right to the base of your spine and kind of move maybe one finger width down. And then if you go like in that direct line, you'll kind of feel like two knobby thingies. So you might be feeling muscle, you might be feeling bone, but kind of two knobby thingies. And then you wanna go and find this big knob right at the base of your like sh where your shoulder blades kind of meet where your neck stops there's that really really big knob you want to kind of move one finger up from that and then you're on c7 so this right here is the length of your cervical spine now keeping our hands here i want us to kind of try to move in those four positions 
So we're gonna start with flexion. So with your hands there, go ahead and move forward into flexion. You can feel the vertebrae kind of almost visualize them getting a little bit farther apart, making that little small curve of their own. Then slowly bringing it back up and into extension, head back. You can feel that, you know, the top of the occiput, the head, getting closer to that little knob that we have our other finger on. Then lateral rotation. So we're gonna kind of go back to neutral and bring one ear closer to the shoulder, bring the other ear closer to the shoulder, almost visualizing the spine moving like a tree. And then we're gonna do rotation. So looking over the shoulder, like you're checking a blind spot in your car, feeling that rotate. And that's about all we kind of wanted to talk about. And I kind of want to offer um, when we are in those four positions of the spine, Paschimottanasana, forward fold, supported fish extension, child's pose, lateral flexion with the side stretch, and then rotation of deer stag. So think about specifically what our neck is doing in that time and space and bringing attention to it. Maybe you're holding the front of the neck. Maybe the neck is making you clench your jaw. Maybe your shoulders are coming up to your ears because um, of something that's happening in your neck. So I kind of want us to just focus our attention there or offer that as a focus for your intention today. Um, and then I'm going to switch it over to Greta and I will pop back in for poses. Cool. That was such a good explanation of the cervical spine. Thank you so much. Um, so let's start together today with OM. So finding a comfortable seat, you can sit on a block, you can sit on your glutes, or you can sit on your heels, whatever is going to feel most intuitive to you in this moment. And we'll do one clearing breath and then three rounds of OM together. And I chant OM to connect us to resonance and sound and vibration in this, in this new virtual way of sharing time and space together. It's not so new really anymore. It's been, it's been like, what, eight, nine months? So anchoring down to the earth, feeling that connection, relaxing your shoulders, releasing any tension. Inhale in through the nose. And exhale, HA out of your mouth. This time prepare for OM, inhale. Inhale, breathe in, and exhale, release the breath, and bringing that reverberation and thinking about the faces you saw at the beginning of class, inviting them into your practice if that feels nice to you. And we're going to start class today on our backs in a supine uh, winged butterfly, so bringing the soles of the feet to touch. And we'll be here for five minutes. So this one's not going to be our super long hold. You can always put uh, blocks or pillows underneath your knees for extra support. And then bringing the back down, you can always support the neck with a pillow or support the back with a pillow. And leaving generous distance in between your heels and your pelvis. This is not a yang style stretch. We don't want them super close. And taking a moment to just arrive and transition into practice. Hands can be at your sides or they can be resting on your torso. Or if it feels interesting, you could rest them on your neck. I'm going to sit back up just to talk about yin briefly. Yin, as we know, is the opposite of 
yang or yang and these two oppositional force forces are very complementary to each other and neither could exist without the other they're dependent on contrast to exist and yin tends to be more associated with dark qualities it's like going outside right now it's dark it's kind of cold it's wet uh, you have to re rely on your other senses there is a little bit more mystery there and sometimes i think we can find the mystery intimidating but trying to kind of find the, the beauty there and relying on your intuition and energetically also cultivating like slowing down and yielding and passivity in the muscles they're not so much a part of our vinyasa practice or a few other aerobic practices like running or dance church this is a complement to all those lifestyle choices so embracing those energetic qualities and then in terms of yin there are three tapas three truths to this practice and the first is to meet your gentle edge or pertinent depth and knowing that for each pose especially today we have some longer holds thinking about if you can sustain that edge for time and if you're like man i don't think i could be here for seven minutes pulling the edge back or adding props Ooh, my friend adding props if you need them. So first, meeting your gentle edge, finding that pertinent depth. The second is to be still. And stillness can definitely be a challenge. But in those moments where it, like if the mind takes over and there's a lot of noise going on, or if there really is that itch you want to scratch, trying to direct your awareness to the breath and using that as a tool to comfort yourself and calm the nervous system down. And there are two reasons in which you would move. The first is if, um, the first is if you're experiencing any pain, we never want to experience any pain, any sharp sensations, any stabbing sensations, any burning sensations. And the other is if you're invited to go any deeper. So after a few minutes of that passive hold, you may all of a sudden feel this release, especially we're going to be doing a seven minute Hashimoto for folds. Like after that five minute, you may even like want to move the pillow out to the side if you were using it. And then lastly, we hold for time and Veronica and I keep track of time on our phones. We give a halfway mark and we give a final minute mark. And this is just so you can more easily surrender into your pose and don't have to worry about it so much. We may be adding some anatomical information in, like peppering it in here and there throughout the class. But otherwise, yin is mostly practiced in, in quiet and using each pose as an opportunity to have a meditation. And with this focus that Veronica presented so nicely about the cervical spine, like really trying to feel the neck and the seven vertebrae. And every human has seven vertebrae. And I think every mammal has seven vertebrae in there in their neck. And slowly begin to invite some movement into your body. Decide how you want to navigate out of this pose. We're headed next to child's pose. So close the knees like you would close a book. And choose if you want to rock and roll up to a seat, maybe adding some activity into your practice, or maybe you just kind of want to flop to the left or the right side. And then coming up into a tabletop, and then shifting your way into Balasana, child's pose, bringing the soles of the feet to touch, knees can be extended or together, arms can be out long out in front of you or at your sides, grabbing props for the chest, and I believe Veronica is going to take us through this next part here. Uh, 
sorry, I went on too long. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so we're gonna get into child's pose. Um, begin by sitting on your heels and slowly coming forward. Um, if you want to bolster under the chest to kind of help take off some weight, that's good. Or maybe even, I've been digging kind of like the pillar of blanket just under the forehead, just to give a little more relief for my neck. You can also do it with your knees a little bit closer. If that's too pinchy in the front of the leg, spread your knees out a little bit wider and go forward. This is just an ever so slight flexion of the spine. You also get a nice hip opener with it. Oops, I opened up my ankle. We are coming up on our halfway point. Notice if anything is gripping or holding. I've been noticing lately I squeeze my toes. So maybe starting with the toes, begin scanning the body, seeing what you could relax a little bit more. Maybe taking a deep breath into your lower back or maybe taking a deep breath into the rib cage. Or maybe taking a deep breath to release any tension being held in the jaw and the front of the neck. Maybe any tension in behind the eyes and the eyelids. Chuck's pose is such a grounding pose. Maybe feeling the points of the mat that you're touching. Maybe just visualizing the neck and the cervical spine, like all those little vertebrae in just the ever so mild flexion. And as we're coming to the three minute mark, I'm gonna offer the side stretch for the next part of this pose. So starting by kind of walking the hands over, maybe to, maybe only to 11 o'clock, maybe to 10, or maybe just like 11.45, I don't know how to say it. Um, but start by going off to the left, feeling that side stretch in the ribs. Breathing into the new space, you know, we work in sides. One side's always going to feel tight, or tighter than the other, or at least different than the other. So just noticing what's going on. We'll hold this for a little while. You know.
Slowly moving hands back through center. Maybe taking a deep breath, maybe getting up for one second, or just walking them right on over to the right side. Maybe one o'clock or two o'clock. Getting that deep stretch on the other side, opening up the left ribs. The latissimus dorsi. Getting into the upper traps, the lower portion of the upper traps. Final 30 seconds. Slowly bring the hands back to center and begin to push yourself back up. Coming into a tabletop, taking whatever movement feels good. Flexion and extension of the spine, rolling the weight into the hands, rolling it back. Find your way after your stretches are done to sitting on your back or sitting back on your mat. And we're going to lie back and go into a figure four. Um, also kind of like a variation of half pigeon supine. So we're going to start with our right leg over our left knee. Now this is okay just here, this is enough, but if you want, you could pick up the left leg, maybe thread the hands through the back of the quad, or maybe go over the calf to bring it in. Just a gentle hip opener, we're not going to be here for long. If anything is pinching in this, the front of the leg or anything like that, simply just kind of move out a little bit. The idea is to get that external rotation of the right leg. A nice hip opening. This is our halfway point.
slowly let go of that left leg, placing it back on your mat, releasing the right foot, and maybe doing little windshield wipers to release the lower back. Maybe do some circles with the ankles. And then take the left ankle and put it leg and put it over the right. Remembering that sides, each side is different. So this side might feel like it's giving you a holiday surprise or something and you're extra flexible. This is gonna be a great stretch. Either grabbing the shin or the, or the hand behind the hamstrings. up on our halfway point. Breathing into the back body. Letting the spine be neutral, heavy on the mat. Feeling just how the spine is on the mat. It's okay if it curves a little at the lower back. It's okay if the shoulder blades come off the mat. It's okay if even if the neck isn't totally straight on the mat. Just observing the spine and its relationship to the earth as of right now. Releasing the right leg, placing it on the floor, releasing the left leg, placing that next to it, windshield wipering the legs, that wonderful counter stretch. And then I'll um, pass it off to Greta. Awesome. And we will make our way. If you haven't already come up to a seat, come up to a seat. And we'll make our way into Paschimottanasana or Caterpillar. We call it in yin. And before choosing to fold forward, really giving yourself a good setup. So you may want to find something to help your pelvic bowl tilt down, kind of that flaring tail sensation. I'm going to actually roll up my mat to do that bringing the legs out long. You may want to have a bend in your knees, get some support 
or under your knees. And you may even want to find some support to put under your chest also for the fold. And we'll be here for seven minutes. I'm going to go ahead and start the timer. And I did want to share, it dawned on me earlier today that I have this book that I haven't read in a long time, um, but it is a book by Bernie Clark on the spine. I was like, oh, I have to look in that today. And I wanted to talk about just really quickly um, that there are 31 spinal nerves and there are eight pairs of cervical nerves. So there's eight nerves in the cervical spine. And the main bundle is the cervical plexus, and it supplies nerves to the posterior of your head and back, and as well as to your diaphragm, which is very much in correlation to your breathing. And then the other thing I wanted to share was that cervical actually comes from the Latin word for neck, which is cervix which is not the same cervix as the neck of the uterus, but it's still like from that same origin of the word. And then the other thing I wanted to read was the spinal cord is an extension of the brain down through the vertebral canal, which I never really think about the spinal cord as being an extension of my brain running down the vertebral canal. So the cord can glide, slide, and stretch, but not too much. The nerves connected to the cord are called the spinal nerves. And I'm not going to go on for much longer so you can really more easily just surrender into the pose, but kind of thinking about all the, all the nerves behind the spine too. And this is the halfway point.
And we're coming up on the final minute here. I'll read just a little bit more about um, the spinal nerves. They are considered part of the peripheral nervous system and have mixed functions. They carry motor sensory and involuntary and unconscious instructions and information called autonomic signals between the spinal cord and the body. All spinal nerves separate into two nerve roots, the sensory axons, which bring sensation input into the brain and the motor fibers, which send signals from the brain to the body. And we are coming up on the last few moments of your hold here. We've got about 12 seconds till the end of the hold. So deciding right now how you are going to want to navigate your exit. And it may be by pressing the palms into the mat and pressing the chest up, which you can start to do now. And then slowly unfurling your spine, lifting the head and erecting the torso. And you may want to release a sound after a long hold like that. Those are always welcome here. And then taking any natural movement your body is craving is counter. So you may want to press up into this form of tabletop as a form of release or extend your legs out or just do anything, yeah, go for a bridge, anything that is going to satiate whatever your body is craving in terms of counter movement. And then from here, we are gonna move on into a twist, so a rotation of the spine, setting up for a deer or a stag pose. And for this pose, bringing the left shin parallel towards one side of your mat and the right shin parallel towards the other side. So you've got like, what do we got? Like perpendicular shins going on here, 90 degree angles in the legs. And you may need to manually maneuver where you are. I needed to kind of scooch back a little bit to feel situated in terms of my legs. And then inhale to find length in your spine. And exhale, twist towards the left. Or I'm making sure that I gave indication on which legs go forward. And then from here, you can slowly begin to bring your chest down towards the ground. And as you move your way down, you may want to grab pillows to support yourself on the way down, or blocks, or anything that is going to assist you and provide support. And if the mind is feeling particularly restless, really trying to direct it either to the neck. You can have some awareness there, trying to release tension, removing tension from your jaw, relaxing the tongue, relaxing your forehead and shoulders, relaxing the belly, relaxing the ankles, the glutes, and maybe focusing on the breath, noticing the diaphragm of the lungs or the rise and fall of your belly.
And this is the halfway mark. And the final minute. And begin to walk your hands back towards your hips, slowly lifting the chest, unswiveling the neck, unswiveling the chest, coming back to more of a neutral feeling in the spine. And then let your legs windshield wiper right to left as a form of release, left to right. And begin feeling the rotation and the external and internal rotation going on in the legs. And then the next time the legs fall towards the right or whatever side that you didn't do on the other side and getting yourself set up for a stay pose here. And really taking the time to manually move your legs, creating those 90 degree angles, the shins running perpendicular and getting, getting set up in your foundation. Inhale the fine length in your spine and then exhale, twist towards the right. And then slowly begin to move your chest down towards the ground using a pillow or a block if you would like that extra support. And there are also, if you twist and it doesn't feel like quite like what you want to do, you can also choose to fold over your shin or over your knee. Those are good options also.
And this is the halfway point. We really are in such close contact to the ground. So feeling that connection to earth, releasing or pouring anything into the ground that you need to let go of or pulling energy up in your roots. Maybe it's a little bit of both, a little give and take. Knowing that earth energy tends to be very transformational, so it can take anything and transform it. And final minute. And begin to walk your hands back towards your pelvis, lift the chest, swivel the neck, swivel the body back towards neutral. And take any movement you need. You may want to bounce the legs, move the head, this bounce the torso around. And Veronica is going to lead us through the next portion of class. We are going to need a block. If you don't have a block, um, a pillow works well. Another yoga mat works well, or also Emily said the other day, a rolled up towel works really well, which I thought was great because everybody has the towel. Awesome. Thank you, Greta. All right. So our next pose and also the kind of final movement of the spine that we haven't covered yet. Uh, extension. So we're going to go into supported fish. Grabbing the block or the pillow or the rolled up towel, such a great idea. Placing it in the kind of the middle of the mat where your two shoulder blades would go. And just slowly lowering yourself onto that block, placing the block between your shoulders. Now I kind of like to have my head hanging off so I get an opening of the front of the neck. But if that's too much on the neck and feels really uncomfortable or makes you dizzy or is pinching in any way, you're more than welcome to bring um, a, another block or pillow behind the head um, for that support. Another thing I like to do is sometimes instead of having my legs out long, I like to cab them in a kind of like a a seat, a cross, a cross legged seat, and then go here and kind of it's a nice adductor opener as well. If your hips are feeling up for it. So let me start our timer here. We're going to be holding this fish for five minutes. So also get cozy. Um, I sometimes put a blanket over myself as well. It's just there's a snowstorm going on where I'm at out here in uh, Brooklyn, New York. Um, so it's extra cold. So I've been using a blanket. And, you know, it being so cold extensions, maybe the last thing my body is trying to instinctively do. Um, it's it, opening up the chest and opening up the front of the body is, you know, kind of against all of our 
animal survival instincts. It's exposing our heart, it's exposing our lungs, um, our stomach, our liver, every organ on the inside. And in winter, you just want to curl forward, but Instead, we're going to kind of open it up in a nice, comfortable way. A supported fish. This is our halfway point. Also, you know, as we think about the front of the body opening, you can also think about the front of the neck opening and how it's exposed and kind of also what the cervical spine supports and protects supports the head that's for sure but it also on the front of the neck we have our vocal cords we have what we use to swallow the muscles we use to chew our food you know that nourishes our bodies and we have our breathing muscles our neck helps us with breathing as well So opening up the front of the neck is also has its own kind of vulnerabilities and parts of us that use maybe a good stretch and a good opening. Coming up on the final minute. figuring out the kind of exit plan for this pose, whether that be bringing up the knees, putting the feet on the mat, maybe finding support through the forearm to press yourself up. Moving slowly out of that extension, moving the blocks out of the way, Doing a counter pose, maybe a folding forward. 
and come to lying on our backs for our final supine twist. And I think I'm just gonna go with the simple one. We did a pretty nice twist in the middle of class, which I always love a twist in the middle of the class. It's so relaxing. And bringing the knees and hugging them into the chest, maybe massaging and rolling around the spine. Our focus of today, our wonderful spine, giving it a massage, feeling the pressure of the, the ribs against the, the front of the leg, the quad, breathing into that pressure. And then slowly dropping the legs over to the left. And if you'd like, you can extend your right arm out long, creating almost a bird wing or a T. With the neck, you can choose to remain neutral or maybe bring it off to the side. If you want, you could put a pillow between your knees or a pillow underneath your knees to really support that. Okay, and then to the other side by moving the legs back through the center, picking them up off the twist. Maybe taking the right hand in, using it to grab the outside of the left leg and pull them over to the right. Sending the left arm out long. Maybe it's to a T, maybe it's to your side or maybe it's way up here over your head. Maybe also the side Right, moving slowly, bringing your legs back to center. Giving them maybe one more hug in. Maybe taking the top of the forehead, tapping the knees, giving yourself a big squeeze, compressing all those joints in the knee the neck, the head, and slowly release 
to Shavasana, our final posture. Now in this one, the spine is neutral in its most relaxed state. You need blankets, pillows, anything to comfort you and support you for this final rest. We have a good on time today, which is awesome. So we'll have a nice long rest. And when you, when it's time to come out, um, it'll be Greta taking us out of this class as she so gracefully took us in.
and slowly begin to invite some movement back into your body. Notice where you initially feel compelled to move. Noticing, maybe it's your fingers, your face, your shoulders. It's gentle, subtle movements back into the body. And bring the arms above you. If you're stretching, a nice good stretch. Bring the knees in towards your chest and roll over onto the left or the right side, left being more associated with this practice and the qualities of yin and the lunar qualities using the bicep like a pillow. And first and foremost, always generating some gratitude to yourself for doing this practice and for reflecting and doing this practice of deep listening and cultivating like a yin practice, an allowing practice. Honoring the lineage of this practice, yin comes from meridian theory and Chinese medicine. So honoring its roots there and also honoring its roots in India because this is a yoga practice. So the wisdom texts like the Bhagavad Gita and the long lineage of teachers have brought this practice where it is now. And also honoring the land that we occupy unceded ancestral lands in uh, Veronica is in snowy Brooklyn and it's the Canarsie, Rockaway and La Pade people and in Seattle we occupy the unceded ancestral lands of the Duwamish Coast Salish people and I actually learned today I live near Lake Washington and the Duwamish people, um, oh no, it's not loading. Um, well, it's okay. I was trying to remember the name of Lake Washington. There's actually people that lived here and there are burial grounds at uh, Foster Island, which I also didn't know. But gently begin to press yourself up to a seat. And moving towards the seat, and situating your hands in where that is going to feel comfortable for you. Maybe there are hands at heart center in this Anjali Mudra gesture, which represents non-dualism, the coming together of the yin and the yang, these oppositional forces. Maybe sensing with your thumb tips where your heart beats in your chest, sensing the compassion and wisdom that resides there. And then bringing hands from heart center to third eye. And bowing forward to seal in your practice, honoring the whole self, the full gamut of your human experience, both the shadowy and the luminous aspects. Peace and thank you. Okay, thank you all so much for being here. And